Hello, happy Thursday. Sorry for the delay, I'm still trying to get used to this new um, format over here. Um, my name is Ashley. I have a food and recipe site, Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen. It's bigflavorstinykitchen.com. I also am on social media at Big Flavors, Twitter at Big Flavors Blog, and normally on Friday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern, I come on and I show you how to cook something. Um, today I'm doing it on Thursday because my mom and my aunt are coming to town from Indiana. They're driving right now, so get me busy tomorrow. Um, just give me this a second here. I'm making today a recipe for garlicky broccoli rabe and water is boiling right now. Okay. If you're not familiar with broccoli rabe, it's a bitter green. It's got flowers at the top like broccoli and also these leaves and it's something that I didn't used to like but now I really enjoy it. Um, when you cook it slow, like you want it to look like almost brown, like not bright green at all. Normally with greens, you want them to be nice and vibrant. This one, the longer it cooks, the sweeter it gets, and um, my Italian in-laws love this. So first I'm going to slice up six to eight cloves of garlic. One, two, three, four, five, six. We do a lot of garlic in this. I slow cook it in the um, in the skillet so that it gets nice and nutty and brown and sweet. And show you. Eventually, it's gonna look like this. I did a little. I started some earlier because the longer it cooks, the better it gets, and I wanted it to be fully cooked when I so I can show you guys what to look for. But gonna peel the garlic, but not whack it to flatten it to get the peel off because um, I want to get nice thick slices. So I like using this little silicone tool to just kind of, it's just like a little tunnel. You put the garlic inside of there and then you press and rub and it loosens the papery skins and usually fall right off like that. So hi Jennifer. I'm going to cut off these little ends here and then I'm going to slice the garlic about a quarter inch thick. And it's going to go in a pan, in a skillet that has not yet been turned on on the stove top. So we're heating the oil, the garlic, and the red pepper flakes together to get them nice and sweet and really flavor the oil. Because this recipe only has garlic, salt, red pepper flakes, broccoli, oil, and oil. That's, that's it. I posted, can you post, yes, the recipe link is in the chat. Oh. You can go lighter on the broth, on the uh, garlic if you want, but it, it really is nice and mild when it cooks this way. So you just kind of want equal, equally thick pieces. I'm doing them about a quarter inch. Uh, if you make them too thin, they might burn. So I like to do them about that thick. Plus, it's like nice, you can see them in the final dish. Uh, next week, I'll be back to Fridays. This isn't one of those instances where you're using like a razor to slice them super thin. They don't have to be perfect, just, you know, approximate. I have a pot of salted water also on the stove top coming to a boil. Well, it's boiling, I just turned it down. But this really is an easy recipe. I always double it anyway, so that's why I went ahead and made, um, I made half, so I made one time the recipe. I started it like 45 minutes ago, so you can see, I'll show you what it looks like after it's been sitting there. So I got eight cloves of garlic in here, and the skillet is not off, not has has not been on. I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, 
Sometimes this is called crushed red pepper. And about three tablespoons of olive oil. And then that, I put my stove top on here. Let's see. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put this on medium heat. And just every once in a while, I'm going to give it a stir to get it to make sure these are flipping over. And once they start to brown, then I'll be able to put the broccoli rod in the water. So like what I like to do is when it starts turning a little like caramelized around the edges, I'll go ahead and drop my broccoli rod in the salty water. So, okay. This process, it takes a little bit of time, but it smells amazing and it's really pretty minimal um, as far as like having to be hands on anything. Let me also, while I'm here, let me grab a link to, um, I have an event going on if you're local. It's in two weeks. It's a cheese board assembly party and I'm doing it at Speakeasy 10562 here in Austin, New York. I'm going to be answering questions on cheese boards and, you know, any questions you have about how to shop for them, how to assemble them, what kind of cheeses you should put in there. Uh, there's a lot of people have a lot of questions usually when I post. So I'm putting a link in the chat. Um, the tickets are $25. You're going to eat a lot of delicious stuff. Um, should be a really good time. So while my garlic is getting nice over here, I'm going to show you how to work with broccoli rub. I'm going to stir this up. Tricky with this camera tripod here, but this I still have on low feet at the back. You can see it's really nice, and you can see how like nice and melty all the garlic is, and that really comes out. So see what I mean, like how normally kind of light green like that would be ideal, but it's delicious for this. So broccoli rum. They're these long stalks, and they have big leaves and flowers. And I, sorry, I'm expecting a cheese delivery today. Um, not for my party, for a different party, because I'm hosting a couple of those in the coming weeks. Um, so it's got these beautiful leaves, and it's got a flower up at the top that kind of resembles florets on regular broccoli. So what I like to do is I take the bunch, and I just trim a tiny bit off the end. And then I cut them into about two inch lengths for this recipe. I like cutting them before I bother, before I blanch or before I put them in the boiling water because I find that it's just easier to cut them first than trying to work with hot, like piping hot, slippery cooked broccoli. Or Broccolini is a different one. It's uh, I actually really like broccoli a lot. It's not bitter at all. It's got the florets like this. It doesn't have quite the same type of giant leaves. So just I cut everything across into you know two inch chunks. That way, when it cooks, it's easier to get like a fork full. Really small with well, it's all the garlic because I cooked some earlier, but at, at this point, if you're starting from the beginning, you'll see a lot of a lot of the good smells in your kitchen. Let's see if I have any other questions. Ah, yes, my double walled coffee uh, coffee beaker. What's it called? So I had broken one a while ago. I got this guy. It's a fellow stag. It's double walled. It's got a little pour spout. I can make more than one cup at a time. And I use this guy. This is part of the pour over kit that came with just one glass that I broke. Um, it's got like a little like silicone grip here. So you can put it right on top and it won't slide out. And then 
the reusable filters that I've been using. This is the one I used this morning. You can see it's like a little darker because it's wet. So they're dry like this. It's, um, I forget what the material is, but it might be him. But you boil it like once a month to get the coffee oils out. You just stick it right down in here. And I like to wet it when I'm first making my coffee. Um, wet it first and that'll also kind of heat up the, the craft and get it nice. And then I just kind of dump it out. Then I add my ground coffee um, into here and then you just pour the water nice and slowly around the edge until you get how much you want. So if you're making, I mean, I made two cups in it today. I use two scoops in this size. A lot of coffee questions. And I apologize for those of you who are waiting for my cold brew post this summer. We went on vacation and it kind of got away from me, so I didn't finish it yet. But I use this two tablespoon uh, measure. So I do one kind of heaping with beans that I grind if I'm doing it just for myself. I do two if I'm doing it for the other ones. So once this starts cooking a little more, you just want to keep an eye on it to make sure they don't start to burn. You can see I'm getting a little color. I'm just kind of trying to cook them over. A little tricky, but it's starting to get a little color, so it's probably safe at this point to start cooking. So the water is salted over here. It's boiling. Um, and then see if I can do this carefully with the camera over there. But you just plop this all right in to the boiling water, and then I'm gonna set a timer for it's like two to three minutes. I'll probably be three. Cook, uh, cut this far away from the stove. I usually camp up right here and actually before we remodeled our kitchen, that was pretty much the only counter space we had, so I just used that for everything. So I've got all that in there. And then I just use a spider to press everything down into the water. And then And then I will warn you when you take the bro uh, the broccoli rod out of the water, it's gonna be it's gonna splatter when you put it into the water. So just be careful. Try to drain as much of the water out as you can. Let's try to get the boiling water, not the garlic. Um. Yeah, this event is going to be vegetarian. The cheap food event is going to be vegetarian snacks only. Um, I have done other ones where you have meats and stuff also. Um, it can be delicious even if you're not. Uh, even if you are a meat eater, it'll still be worth your time. Alright, so these are getting pretty brown now. I don't want them to be done. So since I still have another minute, I'm just going to turn it down and some burning. This is exactly like the nice golden color you want. Oh, I'm doing, so there was no cooking class this week at the library here, but next Wednesday is the last one for this session, and I'm going to do like a mystery box challenge. Does anybody have some fun ingredient ideas? for me to have the kids use. They're teenagers. Make it fun for them. All right, so I'm going to turn this bit off. So this is a spider. It's not familiar with them. It's just uh, it makes taking things out of liquid a lot easier. You can also use it for deep frying. 
I used to have a metal, a, a metal and wooden one, but this one's a lot easier to clean. So as soon as the water that's dripping out of this hits the oil, it's going to sizzle up and splatter a bit. So be careful with that. Just an initial, and it's the one really. I'm going to leave it on medium heat for about five minutes and then turn it down to low. Okay. So I put that in the skillet. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. chicken, um, great fish, shrimp, you could, I'm, I have some tofu in the fridge that I might um, bake and then add it with that. Um, so super simple recipe. It takes a little bit of time to finish cooking, but if you're doing a double batch at once, I would um, cook one batch in the water first, take that out, and then put the other batch in because it's a lot for, for your pot, um, and it'll shrink down too. So I usually use a larger pan. I actually put this stuff in that pan earlier and then I just cleaned it, but that's all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for uh, switching days with me here. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out, direct message me. Um, I'm always happy to help get you excited about cooking in the kitchen. I hope you guys all have a great weekend and I will see you next week. Bye.